response to a question we had about Math 3A, Differential Calculus. Another thing I want to talk about really quickly is the intermediate value here. Okay? And I won't say this super formally, but here's the idea. The idea is if you do something like this, you take a trip and you walk uphill. And let's say you start at a height of, I don't know, 100 feet, and you walk up to a height of 200 feet. I mean, if you use common sense, let's say like you're walking here and I'm just going to chart your progress from left to right, and I'll say this is the zero mark, and I'll say over here this is the 10 mark. Okay? So it's 10 meters from left to right, and the height is 100 feet elevation to 200 feet. And you can clearly see, right? If you go, so if you go from 100 to 200, any value in between for your height, let's say you pick a height of 100 and, I don't know, 9 feet. Okay? So somewhere. Let's say this, it's right here. Does everybody agree? So since you go from 100 to 200, as you walk along, at some point, you are at 109 feet, right? And that would be some point in your walk from point zero to point 10. So I guess it would be somewhere around here, okay? I don't even know, need to know where that is. That's not what the intermediate value theorem says. The intermediate value theorem says it's somewhere in here. Call that point C, this works out, okay? So in terms of formula, what I want is there exists some point C, right? Such that, remember, so f of x, in this case, is gonna give you the height value. The x coordinate will be where you are from here to here, right? So when you do f of c, so when you've moved over to the right c amount, you will be at this particular height, right? So there's some value c, so you have some c out there, right? And then let me get some general information. Where is that c? So let me make it a little more general. We'll call this starting point a, and we'll call this starting point b, okay? So this c is somewhere between a and b. So there's some c in this interval, right? Such that when you look at the height at this particular C, it is exactly this random number you picked. Okay? So, let me write that again. So, let's say you have, so what is the lowest point? Let's say the lowest point is F of A. Okay? It doesn't actually technically have to be the lowest, but it's my starting point over here, my reference frame. And then let's say, just for general, I mean, and then let's say, let's assume F of B is bigger. So, F of A is where you start, F of B is where you end up, right? And we can assume that f of b is bigger than f of a. If it worked, this reasoning would still work out the same way. Then what we're saying is, if you pick any height in between, like here we pick the magic number 109, right? We can just call it y. So if you pick any y such that we have this property, f of a is less than y is less than f of b, right? Everybody okay with this? So if we have anything like this, then you can find some C out there, you don't even know, need, need to know what it is, such that when you plug the C into your height function, you get exactly that height. Okay? So what that said was, if you start at 100 feet, and you go to 200 feet, and you pick any number you want in between, for example, Y could be 109, like in our example here, and you're walking from 0 to 10, that's your X input, so you have somewhere in the interval 0 to 10, you're walking along in here. There is some point C, I don't even need to know who he is, but just some point where if I go to C, right, and I plug into my function, the height that I get is exactly that number you picked, 109. So the height that you get would be exactly 109, and 109 was the Y we chose. Okay, in case the professors are picky, I just want to make, make a couple things clear. The way you state it is fine. So basically says, if you have your f of a and your f of b, and you pick any number between, and you're going, your x values are going from a to b, right? You can find some number in there. When you plug it in, you will get exactly that value you picked to begin with. If these professors get picky, let me make a couple points clear. So number one, <clears throat> the, one of the reasons why I can do this is because you don't have funky things that look like this. So if you have something that looked like this, Right? Then obviously it's not cool because there are a lot of values in here that would be missing, right? So to make sure nothing like this happens, you have to assume, number one, f is continuous. Okay? And then I guess, I don't know if I want to make it a number two separately because they're connected, but where is he continuous? He must be continuous, again, if they're picky, from the closed interval. Okay? Because, well, obviously it needs to be closed because, again, another retarded trick is maybe everything looks right. But maybe we do this, right? In fact, let me do a simpler version. Maybe everything looks right like this, right? But maybe then we do something bizarre like this up here and this down here. Again, you'd have 
missing values, right? So, got to make sure f is continuous, got to make sure it's on the closed interval a to b, okay? So, in terms of the exam, it looks like the way this is going to be tested isn't so much directly by definition, but using it in problems. So let's do something like this. So I, th I think, yeah, let's just do a classic problem like this. So fact. Can you show me that this equation has a root using the intermediate? Now I get it. You pick it apart piece by piece. That's how you